Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to our talk. Okay. Uh, my name is Dr. Peter Malt, and this particular talk and, and study was prepared by myself and Dr. Emma Reed. Okay. So we both run, uh, coordinate the, the HNC articulation course uh, for the life sciences programs um, within the College of Medical Veterinary and Life Sciences. Okay. Um, and what we want to talk to you about, um, or what I want to talk to you about here, is uh, breaking down barriers to access. Okay, so this is a case study in widening participation and accessibility directly from further education. Okay. So a little bit of background. Okay, so historically, um, taking some data from 2014-15, around 9,000 Scottish domiciled students entered university um, in Scotland with an HN qualification. Okay, so that's either an HNC or an HND. 5,000 of these, okay, around 5,000 of these, received full or partial credit, okay, from their HNC qualification, which allowed them articulation. And what we mean by articulation is it means that they've got the credit from their further education qualification, their HNC or their HND, and that is credit bearing, and it enables them access directly into level two or level three um, of their degree um, that they've chosen. I think this is probably the most important part. 22% of these students who articulate with full credit are from the 20% most deprived areas of Scotland. Okay. Um, so we're getting better um, at widening access um, and students that wouldn't necessarily have had access before are getting access, which is a really good thing. Okay. But we can obviously do more. Okay. So how do we make this route more accessible? So the Scottish, uh, Scottish Funding Council has funded uh, six hubs since 2007, okay? Um, and they're sort of regionally um, spread out across Scotland to, to, to cover the, the main region. So you've got North East covered by Robert Gordon University, Tayside and Fife led by Abertay, Edinburgh and Lothians led by Edinburgh and AP University. Okay. And what you'll notice is these are predominantly post 92s, okay? But the red brick, traditional, ancient, whatever you want to call them, research incentive and um, intensive universities, um, are catching up, okay? So Glasgow, we have programs now, which I'm gonna to talk to you about shortly, um, which will articulate people directly into degrees. Um, St. Andrews do the same, um, Edinburgh do the same. Most universities now have these articulation programs and these agreements with local colleges that will allow direct entry and articulation, okay? There's more information on widening access here, okay? Across Scotland and, and things that have been done um, in recent years. So here at the University of Glasgow, okay, we, since 2018, have developed this kind of one plus three model, okay, um, which provides closer ties with local further education colleges. I'm specifically going to talk about the life sciences program here um, and the life sciences degree entry um, route um, in the College of Medical, Veterinary and Life Sciences. So we have this one plus three model, okay, so the one plus three model is essentially you do three years at the University of Glasgow, one year um, a college that first year will be a college course where you do your HNC. Then you'll do an articulation program or an access program, depending on what you want to call it. And your HNC combined with your articulation program makes up that one. You come direct entry into level two and you do level two, three and four here at the University of Glasgow. So the HNC and the articulation program essentially are the equivalent of our level one um, studies here. So for this particular articulation course, we have partnerships with Glasgow Kelvin, Glasgow Clyde, West College, South Lanarkshire and Ayrshire. So the numbers and the students that I'm going to refer to and talk to about are a mixture of students from our partner colleges here. College of uh, Medical Veterinary and Life Sciences is quite a complex, stru complex structure, um, as is depicted by this quite complex slide. OK, so we're made up of eight different schools. Um, and we have 16 different life sciences degrees um, sort of distributed across these schools, depending on them, um, on where they fit, with which um, kind of research categories and things like that. Over 2000 students, um, around 400, which are in level two, and it's level two that's relevant to our articulation students because that's where they're going to come into. Okay. Um, however, our articulation still represents a very small fraction of these 400 students. Okay. So what we want to ask is, Yes, our numbers are rising, but can we make this a more attractive prospect? Can we ease that transition? Are there things we can do to make transition more attractive and an easier process for the students? I'll pop this table up just now, and then I'll go through the structure of our articulation program. Um, so I, this is just to highlight the numbers. Okay, So we said there's around 400 students spread across our 16 degrees. 
these are the numbers that come in, have come in um, through our articulation route over the years, okay? So in 1920, we had 18, 14 here in 2021, 21, 21, 22, and 18 in 22, 23. So there are a very small proportion of those 400 students, okay? And we want to get more of them in because they're really good students. They make a really valuable contribution to our degree. The students themselves benefit massively from our degree. So we need more of them to come in. So how can we attract more and how can we facilitate that transition? So if we look at our articulation course, okay, and we've got this very crude um, eye representation here, of those that come onto our articulation course and pass, around half will enroll in the University of Glasgow and go direct into our level twos. But we've got around half here who don't, okay? A lot of these will go on to other higher education institutes and do equivalent degrees and different degrees in Scotland. Okay, so in some respects, we've done our job. Okay, it's a shame they're not coming to us at Glasgow, but we've prepared them for um, higher education in Scotland and they've gone on to study higher education in Scotland, so that's fine. This chart is the one that I'm more concerned about and that I think there's one we can do something about. If we have a more complete, we've got a group of students um, here. So these are the ones that I've shown you already, but we've also got a group of students that enroll either never engage or they start to engage and then they drop off the course okay so what we're asking is why are these students dropping off um can we retain them are there things we can do better with the articulation course that will make it easier for them to engage and complete the course and that will feed through into those hopefully that will go on to study in higher education okay so if we have a chat with the students okay it's interesting so the the we, we're quite well aware and there's a huge amount of literature on it here about widening access and a lot of the reasons that students um, struggle with access, particularly those from the more deprived areas um, of Scotland. Uh, a lot of that is around work, caring responsibilities, um, sometimes they're mature students, so they, they, they have children, um, and lots of other things, okay, just general life stuff makes full-time education quite difficult for them, okay. And what we found speaking to the articulation course students is actually access to the access course essentially has the same barriers. And I don't think we fully considered this problem. So speaking to some of the students, you know, I've managed to plan my studies around my college work, but I hadn't thought about the time needed to travel to the University of Glasgow. So it was difficult for me to get there. You know, I didn't have time to commute. I could come in the morning, but I had to go halfway through the day so I could get back in time. Um, couldn't travel to campus and back in time for my job. And a lot of it was focused around jobs and work. So that was when we were getting the students to come in over six weeks, one day a week, um, and complete a full day here on campus, okay? So there's cost, travel, caring responsibilities, time management, jobs. Jobs was predominantly the, the, the biggest factor, okay? So access to the access course is an issue, okay? And I don't think it's one we've, we've fully considered. We certainly didn't, okay? So the, the pandemic actually sort of gave us ideas around this okay so there were some benefits um, from the pandemic so what we did 18 19 fully on campus six day program one tuesday a week they come on they do lectures labs tutorials assessments okay all the things that our level one students would do okay to give them a flavor of what would happen so part of it was about teaching them some of the material that our level one students had covered but part of it and probably a more important part of it is about them getting used to and familiarizing themselves with processes at the University of Glasgow. So Moodle, um, teaching approaches, um, different assessment strategies, the marking scheme, things like that. So in 1819, that was fully on campus. We haven't even considered online stuff. Who had, right? Um, 1920, 2021, pandemic hit, everything was moved online very quickly. Okay. So we very quickly replicated the course, well, I say replicated, we designed an online course which, um, you know, met the same requirements uh, and delivered a, a similar type of education to the students. 21, 22, 22, 23, when things started to open up, we were going to bring the students fully back on campus. But because of the reasons we've discussed with them that I just showed you on the previous slide, we decided to go for a hybrid approach, okay, where some of it was online, but we felt it was important to maybe bring them onto campus for one or two days just to give them that experience of the campus and to meet us. And what we thought was actually, yet they'd be able to engage with it a little bit more. So we'd go back and have a little look at the numbers um, and see if the on-campus versus the online versus the hybrid made any difference to that sort of red section of students who, who kind of dropped out and didn't engage. 
Um, and you'll remember from the slide that I put up um, that, that actually it doesn't make any difference. Well, and that's not entirely true. OK, so if you look at the numbers, they're broadly stable. OK, whether we've delivered it on campus, online or hybrid. But this is just total numbers of students that have enrolled. OK, it doesn't really tell you the full story. OK, so at the moment, it doesn't seem like it's made much difference whether the format of delivery. If we speak to the students, though, OK, and this is difficult data to capture, OK, but what I would say from my experience of teaching on it and what Dr. Reed would say is that the engagement with the course is higher for the hybrid model. So we have more students at the classes. We have more contribution from the students at the classes. Okay? It's not bearing out in numbers that come onto the course um, into, into level two, but there is more engagement. Okay, And the anecdotal testimony from the students um, shows that they prefer the hybrid model. They don't want to be entirely online, but they also don't want to be entirely on campus. Okay, And actually, some of our undergraduate students that aren't articulating would probably say that as well. So just to finish off, I touched on the post-92s at the start, um, and I think they continue to lead the way a little bit, okay? They have a much higher proportion of articulation students, okay? So why is that? And I think that's what we need to ask ourselves. Um, I think partly because they led the way with this model, okay? And we've also got these six hubs that are funded by the Scottish Funding Council for this purpose. I think historically, there's always been a much closer tie with further education colleges. And I think there's a perception, perhaps, from um, college students um, that it's an easier transition perhaps into a post-92 than what is sometimes seen as a, as a, as a kind of elite um, ancient university. So I'm in a quite a unique position because I was also a lecturer for a number of years at Abatey and I taught on their biomedical sciences program. So Abatey, over a third of their student undergraduate students across the university, either join in year two or year three. Okay, so that's a third as opposed to those small numbers that I talked about here. Okay, so on the biomedical sciences program, around a third, um, will come on. The mapping between the college programs and the university degrees means there's not really an articulation program. Yes, we'll get them in to come and do a few things, um, but there's not a course that they have to pass because they pass all the material on the HNC course. Okay, And that's the sort of spread of the entry here. So I think this is something that we need to think about, and this is something we want to, to aim for for these much higher numbers. Okay, So we need to think about how we get them in um, and how we retain them and how we make it a more sort of accessible process. So yes, perhaps we need stronger ties with the further education colleges, perhaps we need slightly better mapping, okay? But the, the online versus hybrid versus on campus doesn't seem to make a huge amount of difference, although we're still gonna dig around with that data. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention, okay? Um, and thank you for listening and happy to answer any questions. <laughs>